Hey, Tyrus Dwight here. Now, a while back, you may remember from last year, there was a song called The Richmond North of Richmond uh, done by Oliver Anthony. Now, this video is not going to be a critique of that song in any way, shape, or form. But however, Oliver Anthony came out a little bit later and said something that was very, very interesting. And I think it's worthy of discussion. He said that a lot of people view him as a fence sitter, but he has something that he wants to put forward as his goal for life. It's actually found in the scriptures. That's a pretty great place to start. He said that the thing that is really pushing him forward is what Jesus said. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and the second one is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Now that's a pretty great goal to have in mind, but there's something he said after that that kind of concerned me. And I'm paraphrasing his words, of course, I hope that's okay. He said, if we could just figure out how to do that, if we could learn to love God and love our neighbor as ourselves, then things would be better. But you see, here's the problem. We don't keep reading. Sometimes we can actually miss what we're looking for. You see, Oliver Anthony, I'm not sure of the state of his soul. If he is a Christian, he's a baby Christian at best, or he could be a Christless conservative. And what I mean by a Christless conservative is somebody who believes in the principles of scripture, who maybe even admires the principles of Jesus, the example of Jesus, but is not actually a born again Christian. Another person who uh, fits this category would be someone like Jordan Peterson. Someone who says a lot of true things and even loves Christianity and even, I would say, admires the person of Jesus, but who hasn't fully submitted to the truth of the gospel. And when you do that, what you'll do is you won't take the whole counsel of God. You'll only appeal to it as something that has a lot of good truth in it, but is not really the truth itself and won't submit to it. Now, that's a bit of a tangent, but here's the problem with what Oliver Anthony said. He said, if we could just figure out how to do this, then the world would be a better place. But the thing is, Jesus does tell us how to do this. In fact, it's right there in the next verse. It says, and the second one is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 40, on these two commandments, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself, those two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. In other translations, hangs all the law and all the prophets. Or you could say, all the law and the prophets flow through or from those two commandments. What is Jesus saying? Jesus just summed up the law. It's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and it's also to love your neighbor as yourself. What Jesus just said was, from the Ten Commandments, which God gave to Moses, the first table of the law deals with how to love God. The second table of the law deals with how to love your neighbor. So what's the greatest commandment? Jesus says, I'm going to have to say commandments 1 through 4, followed very closely by commandments 5 through 10. <laughs> all of the law, all of the prophets in the Old Testament, everything that God said by the Ten Commandments and the prophets all flow from the principles, the command to love God, and to love your neighbor. If you want to know how to love God and you want to know how to love your neighbor, you only need to look at the Ten Commandments. In fact, all of the Mosaic civil codes flowed through the Ten Commandments and were practical outworkings in their civil society of those Ten Commandments. Don't bear false witness. Do not murder. Do not create idols. Don't have any other gods before me. All of those commandments, and more, I only listed a few of them, are how you know how to love God and how to love your neighbor. You see, the problem is, and many people in evangelicalism today, that whole mantra of you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself is, people will take that verse and say, we can define what that means because this is how I would want to love my neighbor. This is how I would want to be loved. But here's the problem. You're not God. You don't get to define what it means to love because God is love. Only he can define what it means to love somebody else. And the thing is, there's a lot of people that want to be loved a certain way that is destructive, not only to themselves, but to others. But when we follow God's law, 
and listen to what he said through the prophets, we can know how to love our neighbor and how to love our neighbor well. Now here's the other thing. We don't keep God's law and we are sinners and fallen. And so we don't love God the way we should and we don't love our neighbor the way we should. And because God is just and a just judge, he will one day judge us for not keeping his righteous law. And the penalty for that will be an eternity in hell, suffering under the wrath of God for all eternity. But the one who told us to love God and to love our neighbor, Jesus Christ, who was fully God and fully man, born of the Virgin Mary, lived the perfect life that you and I could not live. And he died on the cross bearing the sins of all those who would believe in him. And he was crushed under the righteous wrath of God in our place. He perfectly kept the law where we did not. And he died. But three days later, he rose from the dead in glorious victory. And that was God's declaration that Jesus Christ was everything that he claimed to be. And that his sacrifice for our sins was sufficient. Later, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father as Lord and King of all creation. And he commands all men everywhere to repent of their sins and to believe in him. That is what you must do this day. Repent of your sins and believe in Christ for your salvation. He will save you. He is your king and master who you've been rebelling against. You've been rebelling against his law. Submit to him today and then bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And you won't do it in your own strength. For if you submit yourself to Jesus Christ, you can know that the Holy Spirit will indwell you and empower you to walk in his ways and to walk in his law. That law which flows from loving God and loving your neighbor. This is Tyrus Twine. God bless. Catch you next time. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe so you can get more video content from Twine and the Vine. And remember, I'd like to hear your thoughts, so please make a comment down below. God bless and catch you next time.